All right, so if you've watched our previous videos on the cat, we started with an everything that's wrong with the 3126 Caterpillar. And in this episode, we're gonna put our money where our mouth is and bulletproof our engine and upgrade it to some of the, some of the things that cat could have done better. And then we're gonna fire it up. Here we go. <laughs> Scott's done all the machining on the head and we got new injectors, new Huey pump, yep. and new turbo. The Ram twin banks and that allows for much more air to go in. So we thought that we would do some designing of ourselves. This will do more than we ever need it to do. There's only one issue. <laughs> All right, so some of the things that we talked about before in our Everything Wrong video was that it's a parent bore block, um, and we tore this one down, and this one is in good shape, so we got new rings in there, freshened the whole thing up, machined the entire head, so we got that taken care of. Next thing is this intake here. Now, all the air comes through um, this little intake here, and then all the air that feeds the engine goes through this hole that's this big. Now, I, I imagine that this is about the same size as this, just in a different shape. Um, from there, it goes through these two little holes, and this would be your grid heater, same as a Cummins. And then from there, it goes into your intake here and then gets fed to your six cylinders. Now, when you look at this, in the cylinder head, I've got it taped off, but there's only about uh, an in inch or two before you see the valve. So the air coming through these two, even though they're separated in the middle, has to curl around and make it to cylinders one and five. Now, when I took the head off of our higher horsepower engine, cylinder number three and four were worn down incredibly compared to the front and last two cylinders. And I think that's because either their air filter was dirty um, and it was letting sand and grit in and all that sand and grit were given to cylinders number three and four because it favored those. The air is really easy to get in there. All right, so one of the reasons they made this intake small is because Cat's fuel filter sits right here and blocks off a good chunk of this. Um, that's to keep the engine compact so it fits in different uh, makes and models. But um, I think they could have done a better job with this. Now, the Germax intakes are also very restrictive. Um, they go underneath the turbo and it has to feed the cylinders at the back um, through very small um, spaces. And there's updated intakes for that. And there's also updated intakes for Cummins to the big, the Ram twin banks and that allows for much more air to go in. So we thought that we would do some designing of ourselves. We're gonna cut the flange off on, the, on this intake here. And then we're going to take um, just some three inch pipe, stick it out and then take a 90 uh, the inside 90 to go around our Huey pump and then just curl a little bit at the back and then I'll get Vince to weld it up nice and solid plates on the top and the bottom and put some heavier plates on it to uh, allow for fittings for our temperature and whatever else. Here we go. All right, so Aaron told me I, I did a bad job and I did not point the camera in the proper position to catch most of Vince welding it. It is very straightforward, and this is more or less a trial and error type of thing to make sure that it works. Um, luckily, we've got two engines and we can do two of everything, um, and we might end up rebuilding this. Vince told me that the metal that I gave him was not the choicest metal, um, but now we know exactly what we're doing. So this is how the intake turned out. Um, what it is, is just the inside 90 cut um, to go around the Huey. I took a uh, on the flat side of just a normal three inch intake pipe. We cut that off. I used the outside of the same 90 and just welded a little corner on the back. And then we took plate and welded it to the inside here um, of the flange. So we'd have room for our bolt holes and then welded a thicker plate where we can tap our fittings for the intake heater and whatnot. So what we're gonna do, um, because there's a lot of heat and everything involved with this, I might try to get some thicker pipe 
um, and then get some thicker plate that's nice and clean. Um, so we can do this again. Um, but we have to deck this as well because it's warped a little bit. We can bolt it to a table. We can pressurize this to 60, 70 PSI. If it blows apart, then we know that we're in trouble. Uh, we probably won't hit more than 40 or 45 PSI of boost. So um, that will tell us whether it's good or not. It's just Vince said, I'm not very happy with my welds. I wanna make this look better. So we might do that, but this is what we're aiming for, a much better flowing intake. We're not aiming to increase horsepower. What I'm aiming for here is to balance the amount of air that goes between the cylinders so it runs a little bit more even. We're gonna leave that for now um, and move on to the next thing to bulletproof this thing. Here we go. All right, so this is a Huey injection system, meaning that you're using a high pressure oil pump to take your 60 PSI oil pressure from your engine, turn it into up to 4,000 PSI at your high throttle, high demand pressures, and putting that on top of your injector. So you're asking your engine oil that's got the um, byproducts of combustion in it to work as hydraulic oil. Fine if you're staying up on your maintenance, but if that oil gets dirty, then we've got problems. Now, um, they used to have a cloth gasket or a fiber gasket between the oil cooler and the oil. And what happened was in the passages between the clean oil and the dirty oil, it would blow out and dirty oil would go to your Huey pump. So we fixed that by an updated gasket from CAT that is now a steel gasket um, and that issue is fixed. Because the pump is supplying so much fuel, it really stirs up the tank on the return fuel coming in that it mixes the water into the fuel and it'll turn really cloudy. And it's actually really difficult to get that out. If the vehicles get older and the oil changes start getting uh, farther and farther between, um, you risk damaging your injection system. So we've done two things to upgrade that. Originally, this had a two micron filter. It was about this big and that is now in the way of our intake. So uh, what we're gonna do is take care of that filtration system on the back of the truck because we're gonna add some more weight to the front. We gotta try and move some stuff to the back. Fast hooked us up with their titanium signature series. Now the Fast, um, they've updated their system. If you have the old FF filters, they don't make those anymore. And you can't use those in conjunction with the new filters. We've got the PF3001 and the XWS3002. Now, all our cat had before was this 1R0751 filter, and this is also a two micron filter. So there's no use to putting both filters in there. There's no point in filtering it twice. Just stay up on your filters. Now this one's meant for a Power Stroke 6.0 and a 6.4, but that works basically the same as our Caterpillar. They actually work together when they design the engine. We need 65 PSI uh, on top of the injectors to fire the injectors and that's what this pump is capable of doing. Everybody knows the plague if you watch our uh, Everything Wrong with the 24 valve Cummins. Those were the worst engines for it because the pump supplies enough fuel to make the engine run, but also to keep the injection pump cool. Um, when that pump wore down, the electronics melted in the pump, super expensive. It's three, four, five grand for a new pump because they don't make those anymore. So um, you can fix that by putting a bigger pump on there and that's what the Fast does. But Fast's claim to fame isn't that they're supplying the fuel. They're really good at taking the water out of the fuel. If the water makes it to the injectors, under the high pressures it vaporizes and it blows the tips out of injectors. Now our injectors, and the pumps are the most expensive parts on the diesel, more than even rebuilding the engine itself. If you blow the tips out of the modern diesels, you can melt pistons and score your cylinder walls by just pouring too much fuel in there. It's got diagrams on it to show you exactly where to put the filter because these are actually opposite than the FF filters. So you wanna keep that in mind. The pump itself is really easy. T is your supply from your tank. E is for engine. Your R is for return. You've got H here for hot. Um, you can run your hot water through here to heat your fuel. If you're in a super cold climate, you wanna do that. Or you can use an electronic heater to start your engine. You can put that in that port. Um, it also has the pressure sensor and we will be using that. We can hook this up to the engine without firing it. We can check that we have the proper pressure that we need right there. Um, we've got one on the Duramax. We haven't driven that truck yet, but we know that at least those ex expensive injectors are getting uh, taken care of as well. So uh, we're gonna mount this on the frame 
And then we're also going to add one more filter because why not? All right, so this is our engine oil supply to our pump. And this pump turns the 60 PSI dirty engine oil into 4,000 PSI that then feeds our uh, more or less common rail system inside the cylinder head. Problem is that we're asking engine oil to work like hydraulic oil. And on top of that, it's dirty with the leftovers from the combustion cycle. Adaptape made a video on how to fully bulletproof your engine. And there's a filter that you can buy that goes in between the pump and the head. The issue is that it needs to be a 4,000 PSI filter and they're really expensive. So the nice thing about a project taking so long is that every week or two, you can go on eBay or GG and see if there's a, a 4,000 PSI hydraulic filter that's able to protect all of our injectors. It needs to catch all the steel filings before they take out six of our thousand dollar injectors. We reached out to Parker, who actually is in uh, Mississauga, and we got a quote from them, and it was about $2,000 for a <laughs> 4,000 PSI filter. That's really expensive, about a thousand bucks US is what, uh, what the kit Adapt 8 mentioned. By the time we do the conversion at 75 cents, taxes, brokerage, shipping, we're at about $2,000 again. But luckily because we've, it's taken so long and we hop on eBay, we found this bad boy for, you got it, $65. <laughs> I think that ended up being just under 200 to the door. This is a 5,000 PSI. Uh, 400 bar, 400 bar times that by 14.7. So this is plenty big. It's got a screen on the inside and we'll do more than we ever need it to do. There's only one issue. <laughs> this thing weighs 40 pounds. <laughs> so she's a big girl. You don't want this thing exploding, but you do want it to protect your stuff. So we will make up for the 40 pounds by maybe putting some uh, airbags on top of the springs in the front. We'll move that fuel filter to the back. I think that weighs about four pounds, so we're 10% there. And then we'll put this in line. So um, it's got a gauge on there to tell you, hey, your uh, Huey pump is screwed. Throw it away if it gets into the red. Generally, we shouldn't have to touch this, but that's cheap insurance. So uh, we went back to VNR, who actually had all of the fittings that we needed. They have their own hydraulic shop. And because they do a lot of heavy equipment, they even had the size 20 o-ring fittings that go into the side here the only issue is they did not have that in a 08 jic for their 4300 psi oil line so i'll machine these in i'll turn this down so it doesn't look like a mistake i'll turn that down on the lathe we'll pop this in there weld that properly and then we can put this nice and close to the high pressure oil pump just on top of the frame. I don't know what's in the truck there right now, but basically we're taking an in from the pump and an out to the cylinder head. I didn't get them to crimp the fittings yet so I can move them and turn them and see which way works best. They had the um, O-ring fittings to JIC for the fuel fittings as well and for the JIC. So we're going from flat into the head on one side to JIC female on this side. So if you do need hydraulic hoses and fittings, check out VNR and uh, we'll get this mounted up. We've got our fuel system protected. We've got our injectors pr protected. Um, we've got our new engine oil filter. And there was one more thing that you guys mentioned. There was a lot, and I mean a lot of you guys that said we need to replace the filtration. <laughs> Now, our balancer did look like it was in good shape, which is why I put it back on. But enough of you guys said, change it, change it, change it, that it must be a problem, and takes out radiators and does a whole pile of damage. So we bit the bullet and bought a remand um, front balancer. So we'll throw that on and then get into wiring it. Now that fitting is swiveling in the head but we're not using this line, so. Okay, so I needed a 45 for my 
uh, entry into the cylinder head. So I just used some grassroots fittings. Uh, I'm gonna mount the fast on the frame there temporarily. The only thing is you would put that under your bed close to your tank and we will too when we get that far. Um, these fittings uh, in here, uh, this is your engine, this is your um, return and this is your feed from your tank. Uh, torque goes to 40 foot pounds um, and then just clamp it in a vise. Don't, don't put any pressure on this pump. This pump is an electric motor and then there's gears in here and you don't want to twist that. That's not meant for that. So let's see how that goes. It's 30. I think 30 is about good enough. That's pretty tight. There we go. here on the if they've got tape on them and they're an NPT national pipe thread they use some sort of sealant uh, whether it be Teflon I don't think they recommend sealant if it's got a taper it goes on dry so don't put anything on there points heavy enough or strong enough to hold this thing is right here at the front um, I gotta keep in mind that my hydro boost is gonna be right about here and then we got a steering shaft that comes down to the side here to the steering box underneath uh, but there's nothing in this corner here my wheel well is right about here so we've got room at the front here this is where we're gonna leave it so with a little bit of uh, a CAD drawing I made a little thing right there Probably just use a chunk of angle iron and that will come out nice this way and then grab these mounts. I'll make another bracket for at the back to catch the back mounts. And then I'll probably run a piece down the side of this because this is a big steel plate and this is aluminum. So um, the, the steel will give it strength too if I can grab two bolts right here. So this line will be coming over the top right like this. And then this one will be coming nicely right through the side. Right there. Wonderful. Here we go. Okay, and that piece of angle iron quickly turns into this. Not, not bad obsession motorsport ready yet, but we'll get there. I'm gonna put this little piece of angle iron underneath. And what I did was just put a little bit of grease in the holes. And then I'll use that as a print as to where to drill my hole. So put that on there. Got my grease marks. I can drill my holes there. I'll bend it over to match the top and just weld that. And then we'll cut this a little nicer and make that look pretty. I'll do the same thing with the holes. I just drilled one hole. So I'll put a little bit of grease in the other three holes, make one little bracket to come out and grab this hole here. And then the straight up and down will almost be in the middle of that. So it won't want to tip left or right. It should be nice and sturdy because yeah, that is heavy. So we'll have this plate supporting it, which is a heavy steel plate, and then the aluminum timing cover. So it should be fine. Here we go. Thank you. 
And a special moment here at uh, the Boss Garage because Santa read all the comments about my chrome socket. So he went to Princess Auto and picked up some nice impact sockets. So you guys don't have to comment anymore about the, uh, the chrome sockets on my impact gun. So um, using these pro points, I have a bunch of pro point tools already from way back. So nice to add to the collection. We'll buzz this uh, filter on and it weighs a lot. <laughs> At least these ones have them laser etched on there, but also cut into the socket so you can actually read it. for whatever but the intake will come right over top of the filter there and it'll look just like it was supposed to be there from factory we'll tie those hoses up nice i might try to get another 90 and then a 90 going down keep that nice and tight we also need to get some fittings for the coolant line so we've got coolant running through the air compressor keeping that cold um, we'll have our line coming in from here going up into our fitting underneath uh, to supply it with air and then this air will go to an air tank that we'll put uh, at the back of the truck. All right, so I'm really happy with how that looks, other than I might paint the bracket yellow. I put it on, I got my fingerprints on there because the paint was not quite dry yet, but I do want to stress that the oil pressure going through here, these lines are good for 4,300 PSI, and this thing will be at 4,000 PSI when it's under full load and, and full throttle. The filter is good for 5,500 PSI, but, we did weld this fitting into there. Now this is this is tapped into there, and then I had Vince weld it, and then weld it again, and then weld over top of that again, because if there's a small pinhole here, that is enough to kill you. If human tendency is when you see a drip, is to put your finger on it. Don't do that. <laughs> Look at the drip, and then shut it off, and then you can wipe it off, and more than likely you'll see uh, the oil still start to come out. The issue is because if it's a tiny hole under 4,000 PSI, it'll cut right through you. It'll blow a hole through your finger and then uh, you risk uh, blood poisoning. Same with injector lines. Don't ever, ever touch injector lines. If you see a leak, keep your fingers away from it because it, it, that, that velocity and the pressure will, will go right through your fingers. I had a, worked with a guy who saw a leak on a combine and again, it drips and you want to put your hand in there hit the fan shroud and knock the finger off. So guys, be safe. Um, we're gonna be safe. We'll wrap some rags around this when we fire it up for the first time. And then if the rags are wet, then we have an issue. But uh, luckily Vince is a pretty good welder. So be careful. Okay, so that's the mechanical side of the engine. That's as good as I can possibly make it. Um, we're gonna get a custom power steering reservoir, but we'll put that and the truck last. We don't care about that right now. We're gonna order our fittings and do all the coolant lines next. And I know in the last video I said we were gonna get it running, but I think we've got another full episode here again on the bulletproofing. So next video, we'll get completely into the wiring. Um, I'm gonna do a nice, neat and tidy job. And then I wanna fire it with the key at the steering wheel on this dash here. So. Thanks for watching guys. Got a lot of surprises for you guys coming up. I don't know when this video is coming out, but we got a couple full builds. Can you quiet Vince? I'm trying to make a video. <laughs> we got a lot of good, we got a couple full build series coming up um, that we're all really excited about. So um, see you on the next video. Here we go.